It's English time! Hi, I'm Teacher Mitch. Come and join me as we learn English the easy way. Subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell to keep updated with my latest uploads. Please also share and hit the like button if you appreciate my videos. Thank you! Ready na ba kayo para sa lesson 2 grade 7? Tara at simulan na natin ang discussion! Our target learning competency for this video is Analyze literary text as expressions of individual or communal values within Focusing on basic elements of poetry In lesson 1 we were able to discuss the meaning of literature and the four literary genres, as well as the definition of poetry, the types of imagery, and how they are used in poetry. Today, we will delve deeper into understanding poetry by listing down its basic elements. So tara, magsimula na tayo! The first basic element of poetry is line. Line is the basic unit of poetry, which is often characterized by its length, rhythm, and arrangement on the page. Lines of poems are often organized into stanzas. Put simply, a stanza is a group of lines in poetry. Just like we use in prose and verses in songs, stanzas are units that give a poem structure. They guide the reader from one idea to the next. There are no rules about how many stanzas are in a poem. A poem can consist of a single stanza or make up an entire book full of stanzas. It all depends on how many stanzas are needed to convey the poem's idea, message, or feeling. In this given example poem, these are the lines, and these are the stanzas. As you can see, this poem is composed of four lines per stanza and consists of three stanzas in total. Stanzas, like poems, come in all shapes and sizes. There are many different types and they are often classified by meters, rhyme schemes, or how many groups of lines they have. Before I list down the different types of stanzas, let us first define the terms meter, rhyme schemes, and rhythm para mas maliwanagan kayo. Meter in poetry refers to the structured pattern of stressed and unstressed syllables in a line. It provides the basic rhythmic structure of a verse. Different types of meter include iambic, an unstressed syllable followed by a stressed syllable, as in delight. It is also the most common meter in English poetry, which consists of five iambic feet per line, which means ten syllables alternating unstressed and stressed. The given poem is a beautiful example of iambic pentameter, where each line follows the pattern of five iams, creating a rhythmic and harmonious flow. Here's a breakdown of the iambic pentameter in each line. Next is trochaic meter. In trochaic meter, a stressed syllable is followed by an unstressed syllable, as in tiger. Here's a short stanza with trochaic meter, where each foot consists of a stressed syllable followed by an unstressed syllable. Another is anapestic. In anapestic meter, two unstressed syllables are followed by a stressed syllable, as in intervene. Here's a short stanza with anapestic meter, where each foot consists of two unstressed syllables followed by a stressed syllable. And lastly, dactylic. In dactylic meter, a stressed syllable is followed by two unstressed syllables, 
as in happily. Here's a short stanza with dactylic meter, where each foot consists of a stressed syllable followed by two unstressed syllables. Now, let's discuss rhyme schemes. Rhyme schemes refer to the pattern of rhymes at the end of each line of a poem. These patterns are usually described using letters to denote which lines rhyme with each other. Some common rhyme schemes include ABAB, wherein the first and third lines rhyme with each other, and the second and fourth lines rhyme with each other. Another is AABB, wherein the first two lines rhyme with each other, and the next two lines rhyme with each other. Another rhyme scheme is ABBA, wherein the first and four lines rhyme with each other, and the second and third lines rhyme with each other. Proceed naman tayo sa rhythm. Rhythm in poetry is the flow of the beat in a poem. It is created through the use of meter, rhyme, and the arrangement of words to produce a musical quality. Rhythm can be regular or irregular, creating different effects. First is regular rhythm. It is a consistent, repeating pattern of stressed and unstressed syllables contributing to a predictable beat. In this poem, it has a regular rhythm with a consistent pattern of stressed and unstressed syllables in each line. The rhythmic flow contributes to a calming and steady feeling throughout the poem. The other one is irregular rhythm. In irregular rhythm, there is a varied pattern that doesn't follow a strict metrical structure, often used to reflect more natural speech patterns or to create a specific emotional effect. In this poem, the rhythm varies from line to line, reflecting the natural, flowing quality of the imagery and the gentle movement of the autumn leaves. There's no strict metrical pattern, which gives the poem a more free and conversational feel. Meter, rhyme schemes, and rhythm are essential elements that contribute to the overall sound, structure, and emotional impact of a poem. Now, going back to our discussion about stanza, here are some different types of stanzas. The first one is monostitch which means a one-line stanza. Monostich can also be an entire poem. Next is couplet, a stanza with two lines that rhyme. Tercet, a stanza with three lines that either all rhyme or the first and the third line rhyme, which is called an ABA rhyming pattern. A poem made up of tercets and concludes with a couplet is called a terza rima. Quatrain, a stanza with four lines with the second and fourth lines rhyming. Quintain, a stanza with five lines. Sestet, a stanza with six lines. Septet, a stanza with seven lines. This is sometimes called a rhyme royal. Octave, a stanza with eight lines written in iambic pentameter or 10-syllable beats per line. The more lines a stanza has, the more varieties of rhyme and meter patterns. For example, Ottava Rima is an eight-line stanza with a specific rhyme scheme in which the first six lines have an alternating rhyme pattern and a couplet as the final two lines. Isometric stanza. Isometric stanzas have the same syllabic beats or the same meter in every line. Heterometric stanza. A stanza in which every line is a different length. Spencerian stanza. 
named after Edward Spencer's unique stanza structure in his poem, The Fairy Queen. A Spencerian stanza has nine lines, eight in iambic pentameter, ten syllables in a line with emphasis on the second beat of each syllable, and a final line in iambic hexameter, a twelve-syllable beat line. Ballad Stanza Often used in folk songs, a ballad stanza is a rhyming quatrain with four emphasized beats in the first and third lines and three emphasized beats in the second and fourth lines. Another basic element of poetry is form. Form refers to how the poem is put together, like its structure and design. This includes things like how it rhymes, the rhythm of the words, how the lines are grouped into stanzas, and how it looks on the page. In poetry, forms refer to the specific structures or patterns that poems follow. These structures can dictate various elements of a poem, including its length, rhythm, rhyme scheme, and line arrangement. Different forms have distinct characteristics and rules, and poets choose them to enhance the expression of their themes and ideas. Here are some common forms in poetry. Sonnet, a 14-line poem with a specific rhyme scheme and meter, often a iambic pentameter. Famous types include the Shakespearean or English sonnet and the Petrarchan or Italian sonnet. Haiku, a traditional Japanese form consisting of three lines with a syllable pattern of 575, often focusing on nature and moments of beauty. Limerick, a humorous five-line poem with a rhyme scheme of AABBA, often with a distinct rhythm. Free verse, a form that does not follow specific rhyme or meter patterns, allowing poets more freedom in expression and structure. Villanelle, a 19-line poem with five tercets, that is three-line stanzas, followed by a quatrain, that is four-line stanza, with specific lines repeated throughout the poem. Ballad, a narrative poem often written in quatrains with a rhyme scheme of ABAB or ABCB, typically telling a story. Read this poem entitled The Ballad of the Lost Ship. This poem tells a story of a ship and its crew lost at sea, capturing the adventure and tragedy. Ode, a formal, often ceremonious lyric poem that addresses and often celebrates a person, place, thing, or idea. Elegy A mournful, melancholic poem, often lamenting the death of a person or reflecting on a serious subject. And lastly, Sestina A Sestina is a 39-line poem with a specific structure. It consists of six stanzas of six lines each, followed by a final three-line stanza. The poem follows a strict pattern of word repetition at the end of each line. The end words of the first stanza are rotated through the poem according to a fixed pattern. Here's a short example. Each form brings its own constraints and possibilities shaping the poem's rhythm, mood, and overall impact. Another basic element of poetry is imagery. This element has been discussed thoroughly in Lesson 1. Kung di mo pa napanood, you may watch it para mas maunawaan mo pa ng gusto. As a review, imagery is a descriptive language that appeals to the senses, creating vivid mental pictures and sensory experiences for the reader. This means the writer chooses words that help you imagine how things look, sound, feel, smell, or taste. 
Types of imagery include visual imagery, auditory, gustatory, tactile, olfactory, kinesthetic, and organic imagery. Next is sound devices. Sound devices are techniques such as rhyme, rhythm, alliteration, assonance, consonance, and onomatopoeia that create auditory effects and enhance the musicality of a poem. Since na-discuss na natin earlier ang tungkol sa rhyme and rhythm, focus na lang tayo sa iba pang sound devices which are alliteration, assonance, consonance, and onomatopoeia. Take a look at this sample poem. Assonance refers to the repetition of vowel sounds like the U in moon, tune, and soon. Alliteration means the repetition of initial consonant sounds such as bright and blazing, creek a tuneful tune, and foxes flutter. Consonance, on the other hand, is the repetition of consonant sounds like the L in leaves lie low, lonesome lay, and W in wind whooshes. While onomatopoeia are words that imitate sounds such as creak, flutter, shutter, and whooshes. Let's now proceed to figurative language. Figurative language adds depth, nuance, and emotion to poetry by going beyond literal meanings and inviting readers to interpret and experience the text in different ways through the use of metaphors, similes, personification, hyperbole, and others. It allows poets to convey complex ideas, emotions, and experiences through imaginative and creative language. Let's have this poem as an example. The first one is simile. A simile is a figure of speech that compares two unlike things using like or as. Example from the poem is, it's rays like fingers reaching out. The rays are compared to fingers using like. Another simile in the poem is, it's glow as soft as a lover's touch. We also have metaphor. A metaphor is a figure of speech that directly compares two unlike things by stating that one thing is another. It does not use like or as. Example from the poem is, The morning sun is a golden coin. The sun is directly compared to a golden coin. Another metaphor in the poem is, The moon is a silver lantern. Next is personification. Personification is a figure of speech where human qualities are given to animals, objects, or ideas. Example from the poem is, the wind whispers secrets to the trees. The wind is given the human ability to whisper secrets. Other examples are, Who dance with leafy laughter. The river sings a silver song. Mountains stand as giants. And lastly, hyperbole. Hyperbole is a figure of speech that involves exaggerated statements or claims not meant to be taken literally. Example from the poem is flowing faster than time itself. The river's flow is exaggerated to be faster than time. Other examples are their peaks kiss the heavens and touching stars with ease. And the last basic element of poetry is theme. Theme is the central idea, message, or underlying meaning of a poem, often expressed through recurring images, symbols, or motifs. Let's read this one stanza poem and then identify its theme afterwards. In a meadow, flowers bloom bright, whispers of the wind in flight, butterflies dance in sunlit beams, nature's canvas, painted dreams. The theme of this poem is the beauty and tranquility of nature. It emphasizes the vibrant life and serenity found in a natural setting, highlighting the flowers, wind, butterflies, and sunlight. 
the imagery creates a sense of peace and appreciation for the natural world's delicate and harmonious beauty. Thanks for watching!